Okay, so we're going to finish Section 1, Earth's Atmosphere. We're going to learn about the ozone layer. Okay, you're going to start where you left off with Section 8, which was the temperature and the atmospheric layers. We will talk about this in class tomorrow. Or, we talked about this in class today. But we're going to uh, discuss the ozone layer. So you need to be on page 14 in your textbook. The ozone layer. Within the stratosphere, about 19 kilometers to 20, 48 kilometers above your head, lies an atmosphere layer called the ozone layer. Ozone is made of oxygen. Although you cannot see the ozone layer, your life depends on it. The oxygen you breathe has two atoms per molecule, but an ozone molecule is made up of three oxygen atoms bound together. The ozone layer contains a high concentration of ozone and shields you from the sun's harmful energy. Ozone absorbs most of the ultraviolet radiation that enters the atmosphere. Ultraviolet radiation is one of the many types of energy that come from Earth, come to Earth from the sun. Too much exposure to ultraviolet radiation can damage your skin and cause cancer. CFCs. Ev evidence exists that some air pollutants are destroying the ozone layer. Blame has fallen on chlorofluorocarbons, chemical compounds used in some refrigerators, air conditioners, and aerosol sprays and in the production of some foam packaging. CFCs can enter the atmosphere if these appliances leak or if they and other products containing CFCs are improperly discarded. Recall that an ozone molecule is made of three oxygen atoms bonded together. Chlorofluorocarbon molecules shown in figure 9 destroy ozone. When a chlorine atom from a CFC chlorofluorocarbon molecule comes near a molecule of ozone, the ozone molecule breaks apart. One of the oxygen atoms combines with one of the chlorine atoms, and the rest from a regular two-atom molecule. These compounds don't absorb ultraviolet radiation the way ozone can. In addition, the original uh -oh, The original chlorine atom can continue to break apart thousands of ozone molecules. The result is that more ultraviolet radiation reaches Earth's surface. All right, so here's figure nine. Okay, so they used to be used in refrigerators and air conditioners. So what do these two things have in common? Okay, we well, need to answer that class that question in class tomorrow. So what do CFC, what do refrigerators and air conditioners have in common? What are CFCs used for? That's the question I'm going to ask you. Okay, so one atom of chlorine can break apart approximately 100,000 ozone molecules. All right, how does that happen? So the ultraviolet light breaks up the CFC. Okay, it's chlorine and fluorine. The chlorine atom breaks up one ozone. It connects with one of the oxygen molecules, leaving, this is what we breathe, two oxygen molecules. So it turns the ozone into something we can breathe, but that is not what we want. We need the ozone to uh, protect us. Okay, and we'll talk about the temperature changes as well in class. But you need to understand this diagram. Okay, so moving forward, the hole in the ozone. The ozone, uh oh, the ozone hole. The destruction of ozone molecules by CFCs seems to cause a seasonal reduction in ozone over Antarctica called the ozone hole. Every year, beginning in late August or early September, the amount of ozone in the atmosphere over Antarctica begins to decrease. By October, the ozone concentration reaches its lowest values, 
and then begins to increase again. By December, the ozone hole disappears. Figure 10 shows how the ozone hole over Antarctica has changed. In the mid-1990s, many governments banned the production and use of CFCs. Since then, the concentration of CFCs in the atmosphere has started to decrease. Okay, so let's look at this. Because it's, October, it's September right now, right? Hmm. Where's my little thing? Oh, well. All right, it's September. So we are almost at the point where the ozone concentration reaches its lowest level. So what does that mean? Is the hole in the ozone big or small? That's another question I will ask you in class. So here's our figure. And we looked at this uh, when we first got our books. But um, if you can see, here's the red. This is the ozone, heavily uh, concentrated ozone. And this little blue part here is where the hole is starting. Okay? Uh, 1988, it hasn't changed a whole bunch. And here's where the hole is created. Okay, October right here, there's very little ozone, which means the sun's rays are going to penetrate, and this is all ice underneath here, because this is where the South Pole is. And whoop, September 1999, so this is nine years later. And so what we need to do is we need to look and see um, at this time of year what the hole in the ozone is looking like. All right, so here's our notes. All right, for section nine, we have the ozone layer. Where is it located? It's located in the stratosphere. What does it do? It absorbs harmful UV rays. Those are ultraviolet rays. What's the problem? CFCs are destroying the ozone layer. Okay, those are chloral fluorocarbons. There is a hole in the ozone layer above Antarctica. All right, and that completes section one.